Has anybody ever felt stuck in one place? Or drowned in your work? Or maybe you're not even sure if the work you're doing is worth it. Or if you're worth it. You're in a place that I call the mud. And some of the best things in my life have come from the mud. My name is John Sinclair. I'm a singer, I'm a violinist, and a producer here in Seattle. I work with a ton of artists in Seattle and all beyond throughout the US. I'm here to talk about the goals you set for yourself, but more importantly, I'm here to talk about the mud that you have to work through to make those goals possible. So I grew up in Winthrop, Washington. Does anyone know where Winthrop is? Woo! <laughs> Can you point to it on a map? Yeah, I think, yeah, that is a map. So, <laughs> Winthrop's right up here in the middle of nowhere. So, I mature slowly but surely surrounded by apple trees in this tiny rural town. And in my elementary school, we were forced, forced, to pick up a musical instrument. And I choose the violin. And I hate it. I hate it so much. It's possibly one of the most painful instruments for the human body to try and accommodate. Are there any violinists in the crowd? <laughs> Woo. So, you know, that as a tot trying to wrestle this thing into position and trying to get it right and your teacher's yelling at you felt like getting stretched on the torture rack. But at some point, despite the blood, sweat, and tears, I fall deeply in love with the music itself. So I'm in high school at this point, and I'm still learning violin, and I've just started to teach myself piano and teach myself how to sing, and I've just started to write. And I'm running around, and I'm getting myself into trouble, and sometimes getting myself out. And one of these summers, this goal that I set for myself that defines the next five or six years of my life is born. So I'm sitting on the couch next to my buddy, Nick Ulmer. And we're sitting there, and we're watching a very popular music video you may have heard called Thrift Shop. <laughs> I'm gonna pop some tags, only got 20 dollars. So we're sitting there, we're watching this video, and like any good Pacific Northwest high school, we're diehard Macklemore and Ryan Lewis fans, right? <laughs> like we knew their old stuff, we knew them before they sold out, we told our whole school about them before anyone, none of it's true. So I'm sitting here and I'm talking to my buddy Nick, <laughs> and we're watching this video, and I turn to him and I say, one day, I'm going to work with Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. <laughs> so highly presumptuous of teenage me to say something like that. The weed probably helped. So I'm 15, 16 <laughs> at this point. And music has become my religion. I eat it, I breathe it, and I sleep it. And I've just started working with the local symphony. I'm writing pieces for them. I conduct a few in concert. And I throw my own concert for the first time which is a big deal, because I'm a nervous performer and always trying to get better. And I graduate high school a year early, so I'm trying to get out of this small town. And I remember this so clearly. I go to my dad, and I say, Dad, I, I want to get out of here. I want to move to Seattle, and I want to be a pop star. <laughs> and my dad says, that's great. I believe in you, and I'm not going to pay your bills. <laughs> Right about here is where my mud starts. So I moved to Seattle, and I moved to U District, right just up north of here. And my goal is to write, record, and play for six hours a day. Every single day, seven days a week, so 40, 42 hours a week. But I also gotta pay rent. So I pick up a job biking for Jimmy John's, delivering sandwiches, and I start busing at a restaurant downtown. And this is my mud. And I know this doesn't sound like a whole lot, but I am waking up in the morning, I'm biking for five or six hours straight, and I'm work, 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 grind, 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 busting tables at the restaurant, and when I get home, I put in my six hours that I've allocated for myself, because that's what I really want to be doing, and I work and write until I pass out, sometimes literally on my keyboard. And I'm making no money. I'm making less than no money. I'm trying to pay the musicians that I'm working with, which is very important, I'm playing at Sunday night dive bars for six or seven friends, like guilt trip to come out and see me. 
who are all on my guest list, so no one's making any money. And I'm giving a lot of my services away for free because I'm just trying to get out there and I'm trying to network and connect and meet new people. At one point, I'm biking fiercely down the Ave, and I have my sandwich in hand, and I'm trying to get there on time and get the tip, and my chain breaks, and I front flip down the Ave, and my bike goes over me, and I just grind across the pavement, and I send Jimmy John number two, threes, and fours flying everywhere like a <laughs> flock of meat pigeons across the U District, <laughs> and I limp in to Jimmy John's, battered and bloodied, hauling my only bike broken behind me. And I know it sounds kind of whimsical and funny, but this self-doubt and crippling anxiety I felt during these years of my life was really real to me. I didn't go to college. I'm working these jobs. I'm trying to make something work. There's no immediate satisfaction. This is my mud to work through, to make something out of. And this goes on for years. This is not like a small slice of my young adulthood. But one night, I get a small break. So I'm busting tables downtown at this restaurant, and a rapper from the town that I recognize comes in, Raz. So Raz sits down, and he's this big guy, tattoos up to his neck, eight gold rings, and he's hunched over his deep-fried sushi roll, probably trying to eat in peace. And I come up to him, this skinny, geeky white kid, with my busing tray, and I come up to him, and I, well, sir, may I take that plate for you, right, and brush some of these crumbs off, and you should listen to my mixtape. <laughs> and he did. So I get this call, thank you, and I get this call two days later that he wants to work together. Full stop. Everything up until this point has just been work. It's just been work, 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 grind, grind, grind for no immediate satisfaction. And now I have this tiny opportunity, just like a small chance to meet another artist, to work with another artist. But because of the countless hours of apparently fruitless labor I've spent working alone in a room in the U District, I'm actually in a pretty good place to share my material. Back to our story. So, he and I end up working on a lot of material together. And we're in the studio one day, and he gets a call to go on tour with... Macklemore. <laughs> he gets a call to go on tour with Macklemore, and he takes me with him to sing and perform the songs live. So relatively suddenly, I have gone from yard sailing down the U District Ave to being qualified to open for a platinum artist on an arena tour, sometimes like 10,000 seats per venue. And I just think that picture is so funny, that transition in my life. So I didn't really pitch myself to Macklemore. I didn't know anyone in his crew. Um, all I had to back me up were these countless hours spent working alone in a room in the U District. And speaking of mud, after this arena tour, I go back to bussing tables at the restaurant to pay rent. So this is, there's nothing in life, apparently, is immediately satisfying. <laughs> so at some point, I meet Ben Macklemore, and he likes my work. And he invites me to write the string quartet part for Drug Dealer, featuring Ariana DeBoo. And we play Drug Dealer on Jimmy Fallon. And then right after that, I release my first album, Low, and he hears it, and he hears me sing and invites me to be a part of his next record, Gemini. So I sing the last track, Excavate. And I'm writing this high. I mean, I have gone from the orchard to biking for Jimmy John's to barely making rent, and then in the space of like two to three months, I'm in this tremendous uprise in my career and what I'm doing, and it's fantastic, I'm not on top, but this is such a relatively small slice of who I am and where the work has really been done. And if you reverse engineer this, it's all a direct result of working alone in a room in the U District. And I'm trying to think of how I got here. 
to this point in my life. I didn't really have a plan besides work. And I didn't really have a leg up in this career besides just a super stubborn personality. But working through my mud gave me the skills, whether I knew it or not, to be where I am and do what I want to do. And I guess that's my point, is that the mud is not some obstacle that you have to find a clever way around or over to get to your goal that lies waiting on the other side. The mud is your goal. It is what you have to work through to even make your goal possible in the first place. Who here has goals? Everyone should be raising your hand, big or small. Not you, the goals. <laughs> Some people have money. Some people have connections. And some people have raw, genius talent. But everybody has mud to work through. And this crippling self-doubt and anxiety that I felt working alone in a room in the U District, not sure of myself or my music or if I was good enough or if I was ever going to do anything, dropping sandwiches off to frat boys to pay rent on a broken bike, that was my mud. And I believe the mud is what makes you. Thank you.